So for the first week we talked about love and respect. We said a woman's number one need is to be loved. Um, a man's number one need is to be respected. And somebody says it's a cultural thing. It's not a cultural thing. It's not in Atilogu handbook that we saw it. You know Atilogu? It's not Atilogu cultural dance handbook. Couple says it's a culture. It's not a cultural thing. It's a scriptural thing. It's in Ephesians 5.33, NIV translation. It said, you men, make sure you love your wives and you wives see to it that you respect your husband. It's there. The person that created human beings and created marriage is the one that gave that advice. All right? I don't want to recap the whole thing. So it's on YouTube if you missed it. Go and watch it. I'm trying not to recap it because I don't even have that much time today. So we also established last week that... Did you enjoy last week, by the way? (laughs) Praise God. That women are relational or relationship-oriented, family-oriented. Men are work-oriented. We established that the first thing God ever gave Adam was work. And the first thing God ever gave Eve was a family, a marriage. So since that time, men are generally work-oriented. So a man will be at his best when he's trying to protect his job. Men will change to keep their job, but they won't change to keep their marriage. They will change to keep their job. Or let me say they will change quicker. So... A lot of men, and the reason why we're doing these things for men to understand, because a lot of men have left family to go and look for work. They've left family to go to another country, another city. So you need to understand that family life is also important. And as much as work is important to you, you must consider the general well-being of that family. Very, very, very important. Okay? This is, this is why we're doing the differences. For you to understand that you are just thinking of work, 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 but you must consider this decision I'm about to make. Does it also favor my family? All right, does he, you know, women, women are family oriented. A woman is also at her best when she's trying to protect her family. Her strongest strength is revealed. Women will know what I'm talking about. If a woman is even feeling sick and all that, the moment her child is sick, what, what happens to her? She will get well. She will get well. If she was feeling sick and when her child becomes sick, she will forget anything she's facing and suddenly super strength will come for her to take care of her child. Is somebody getting this? So women are become superhumans when it comes to re- keeping relationship and family. Every FBI and code looking for Osama bin Laden and all that. All they need to do is let a woman find out that her husband is cheating with another woman in, inside Osama bin Laden's house. <laughs> the woman will find Osama bin Laden. Women are women are automatic FBI. Once anything is threatening their family, it's just how they are. They don't need any detecting machine. They just detect. <laughs> Praise God. So, so women are relational. So this is why, you know, just like the, the couple that are planning the wedding, so this is why you need to understand why, you, you know, you must show interest when it comes to family things. A lot of men can spend any amount of money on cars, on houses. When it comes to things that regard family, like, nah, what does it matter? A man likes house. A woman likes a home. So there's a difference. So you must also be compassionate and understanding of what your wife is interested in. Don't be uh, uninterested and uninvolved when it comes to things that have to do with the home. Since you know it's something she likes. So just for instance now, we're doing marriage conference next week. Is next week going to be? If you are here, you're a man. You are the one that should initiate registering for marriage conference. Your wife will be so thrilled that you are interested in the family. That's quick. You have got cheap points. But for you to be dragging legs, saying, mm, my girlfriend, are you so, mm, mm, mm. You, are, you are missing the point. That's why we're teaching you the differences. When you understand that this marriage thing is, or family thing is very important to your wife, you put in the extra effort. That's why we're teaching it. So as a man, you are the one that should register. Go and register. Bring your money. Tell her, oh, honey, let's go and register. Be, show interest. You are scoring points. Don't sound uninterested and uninvolved. Say, it's only business. When they do business conference, I'm interested. No. All right? Very important. Show interest. You go register. Hallelujah. You go and register. Take the lead. Say, yes, we are going for marriage conference. The woman will be so thrilled to find out that you two are interested in the family's well-being. All right? One of, one of, my, um, one of the people we counsel and coach, he's a top bank executive here in Nigeria. Top bank executive and... <laughs> Uh, I, just, I sent him a message some days ago, some weeks ago, rather. I said, hey, have you guys done date nights recently? Ah, he said it has been like two months since they did date nights. 
Ah, I said, that's too long ago. Do date night. He, 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 you know, he's a busy guy. Top bank, top bank guy. <laughs> one or two days or one week or so after that, my chat with him, he called me and said, ah, things are scattered in the house. That his wife is doing this. I said, you know what? Women's emotional tank is filled by when you show them love. That's why I was, that's why I, I was hinting you ahead. You see, you, you don't wait for your car to enter reserve or to enter low or to even break down before you top it up. You top it up every time you are using that car. That's how a woman's emotional tank is. Every day she's alive, she needs topping up. Her emotional tank. So just be doing acts of love, acts of romance, acts of kindness. Don't be doing it regularly. But most men do things only when it's necessary. So she would have first broken down, become trouble. When a woman's emotional tank is down, she looks for trouble. Everything... Because since you won't talk to me willingly, you will talk to me in Korea. But this talking, <laughs> you must talk it. <laughs> so most men don't get it. So don't wait for that. Don't wait for that. Just keep pouring in. Keep pouring in into her. Keep pouring into her. Even when everything seems okay, take her out on date night. You know, use nice words. I love you. I miss you. I, like, I just want to hear your voice. How are you doing? I'm checking up on you. That's the best way. Don't wait for her to... Because when a woman enters those crisis mode, because she's very emotional... In her makeup. Sometimes even she doesn't know why she acts the way she does. That's how her emotions run wild. So whenever she falls low to some level emotionally, what happens is this. I think I said it last week. What happens is this. She, her stress level goes up. Once that happens, there are two layers in her head. There's one that is, is a box full of all the things that have gone wrong in her life. In the past till date. Once she's stressed, she goes into that room. And she opens that room. When she opens that room, everything is in one box. All the things you have done that she has said she has forgiven you. <laughs> it's in a box. That's how her brain is compartmentalized. Once she's upset, stressed, you know, all, she enters that room and she brings all of them out. So she will fight you from 1982 to date. <laughs> I might be like, ah, this thing is... It's not, she's not even trying to be wicked. Her mind is just wired like that. Women are past-oriented. So when she's stressed, she goes to that box. That's why you don't wait for her to get stressed. Your, your reason for, your motivation for keep being nice is don't go to that box. If you go to that box, there will be no peace in that house. <laughs> Women are past-oriented. Women always reflect and remember their past. It's only happiness that will make them not do that. If they're not happy, they will go to their past. That's the woman. If she's upset now, she will start from 90. She will not, she will not start from yesterday. Because men don't understand this. Ah, this is not just yesterday we had the quarrel. How come you're talking about the one, what I said during our wedding? They are all in the same box. As long as she's upset, she will bring out that box and everything is there. She can't separate them. She can't say, okay, this quarrel is just yesterday. Mm -mm. She will first start feeling sorry for herself from her wedding day. That's how on your wedding, your mother did not dance. <laughs> You'll be wondering, how does that concern today own? They are in the same box, that's why. They are in the same box. They have to be all processed together. They are in the same box. Don't make, make sure she doesn't go to that box. If she enters that box, she's going to bring everything out together. They come out together, they go together. Everything, she attaches everything. And sometimes, it's not just only you. All the other people. That have water, her father, her uncle, any other person that have water, they are all in that box. And since those people are not around, <laughs> guess who will take the lashing and the attitude that the, those people deserve? It's you. <laughs> men, on the other hand, are forward oriented. So whenever there's a problem, what do men say? Let's move on. Men are forward oriented. You see, men deal with stress by moving away from stress. Women deal with stress by engaging stress. <laughs> These are the things that cause chaos in the homes. Because we are, we are all reacting differently to the same situation. If a man, if something is stressed, and this is why you see men come home, they put on TV, they watch TV, they are blank. That's how men deal with life, the crisis of life. They disconnect from it. This is why when a man gets home from work, he wants to disconnect from all the stress, all the things that didn't work. That's why when he cannot get home and you start stressing him, he feels highly stressed. 
Because he, he, he came on believing, I'm going to now just watch TV, watch TV without even thinking of what I'm watching, just blank out. But a woman on the other hand, how a woman deals with stress is engaging the stress. Men are very interested. If there's an elephant in the room, men can have a conversation and pretend not to see the elephant. There, there might be two men that have serious issues. Serious, they should discuss. The, wound is, the big elephant here, they're talking above the elephant. They'll talk about every other thing except the real thing. And they will go home. Women on their hand from the from when they enter. That's why what was one of the favorite words of women? Favorite phrase of women. We need to talk. And that's the thing men hate the most. When men hear we need to talk, say, hey! What did I do? What did I do? Check his phone. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? All day he's thinking, what did I do? 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 He said, my brother, my wife said we need to talk. What did I do? What did we do? Is there anything I do? Did your wife tell her anything? Are you sure you didn't tell your wife what I tell you not to tell your wife? He's panicking through the day. He now gets home in the evening. The wife now says, honey, I think we need to change the heater in this bathroom. Hey! Is that the we need to talk that you told me? You're a wicked woman. You're a wicked woman. God will judge. He has almost had heart attack. So women, please don't book appointment to talk. Just talk. You terrify us <laughs> when you book appointment to talk. Just tell us the problem. We like to process it ahead. We don't think as fast as you. So just tell us that, honey, we need to change the heater in the room. Good. Now we need to talk. The man is panicking. He can't even eat. You have food. Say, mm, just talk. Can't eat because the food is not going to go down. <laughs> he said, yes, we need to talk because this heater. I just it doesn't get heated quickly. That's it. Remove the whole bathroom, honey. That's not a problem. <laughs> Women engage. That's why when there's an argument, most times the man wants to leave. The man wants to blank. But the woman wants to talk. She wants to connect. She deals with problem by confronting it. Men deals with problem by running away from it. The only problems men like to deal with are problems that they can't run from. Problems that are present danger. In the olden days, it was lions and bears. They can't run from that. <laughs> I have to protect my family. But another problem will log out. That's how we deal with it. So men are forward-oriented. So a man's favorite statement is we need to move on. Let's move on. No matter what has happened, the woman can't believe that a man, did you did this to me? You, when you should have defended me in front of your mother, when you should have defended me in front of your father, the woman is very emotional and intense about the problem, and she's thinking the man will understand, and the man will say, okay, can we move on? She's like, you must be kidding me. <laughs> We ain't moving anywhere. We have to deal with this issue. So what's the wisdom point in all this? Whenever your wife is having those bouts that she's going to the past, the best thing to do is to go to the past with her. Don't try to force her to move on. She's going to resist. So go to the past. Let her vent. Talk about what happened. Not in a defensive way. There are basic rules I give for communication. Don't defend. Don't debate. Don't dismiss and don't, uh, there are four Ds. If Ada was here now, she would tell me. <laughs> I said, don't defend, don't debate, don't dismiss. Don't say, come on, leave this. No. And don't uh, disagree, I think. There are four Ds. I think disagree, yes. So don't debate, I mean, don't defend, don't debate, don't dismiss, and don't disagree. Those things will make her talk more. If your aim is to make her not talk more, don't do any of these four things. Any of these four things will make her say, ah! And she remembers more details than you. She will mess you up. Women have a bigger memory, scientifically proven. They have a bigger memory. That's why they go to the past. That store, the way they store those things is because the memory is big. Men don't have a big memory. So men, even if men wanted to store, they really don't have where to store it. That's why men are always saying, let's move forward. Nowhere to store it. A woman will remember everything. What happened at the wedding, everything. How she felt. Most men don't remember how they felt. The only thing they felt during the wedding is all the money they saw being spent. <laughs> That's all the man remembers. He doesn't remember any other thing in the wedding. We don't have that big memory. So men are forward-oriented. So for you as the man, like I said, go with her to the past if she needs to go to the past. That's how she will get healed. She will feel better if she's in touch with the past. So go with her. Don't try to drag her from it. Go with her. Once, you, once she can see that you have come with her to the past and you are okay with the past, she'll be okay and she'll move forward. 
the more you try to force out of it, she'll be like, you've not gotten it yet. And she feels a need to make you get it. That's why women nag. They nag because they feel, Koti here. You don't understand, and you must understand. So, if you want her to come out quickly, quickly understand. So quickly follow her to the past. It's okay, what happened? How did that make you feel? Wow, I didn't know that made you feel like that. You know, she'll say, yes, I felt like that. And she'll tell you, she'll cry and all those things. Great. Once you don't defend, don't debate, don't dismiss, don't disagree. Even if you feel you need to, dis you, you don't agree, don't disagree. You don't win a woman in an argument. The reason you don't win a woman in an argument is because she's not even talking based on facts. So you can't win. Many men don't understand that. You will never win. The reason is because women use words to communicate feelings. When a woman is talking, what she's actually trying to do is communicate how she feels, not the facts. You, you are following the facts. So a woman will say, I know, you're not, I know you don't love me. The man will say, eh? How can you say I don't love you? Me? You see, you are missing the point. You say, me that bought you shoe. Me that I came back early. Me that I'm working hard to take care of this family. You say, I don't love you. She doesn't literally mean that you don't love her. She's saying right now, I don't feel loved. <laughs> so women use words to communicate feelings, not facts. Not that they don't know facts, but they are not in that conversation for facts. They are just trying to communicate how they feel. So don't go there and try to debate with her. You are wasting your time. You will never win. Instead, quickly try to decode what is the feeling she's trying to communicate. Once you get the feeling she's trying to communicate, what you should give as a man is give reassurance, give encouragement, give sympathy. That's what you should give. So if she's saying, I don't feel loved, what you should do is that, honey, you know I love you. That's what she wants. She wants reassurance. But most men will be debating. <laughs> she needs to know that you understand what she's feeling. So just show that you understand that, wow, that must have made you feel real bad. Or that must be terrible. Let her know you understand how she feels. And women don't need solutions most times when they are complaining. They can figure out things themselves. They need to talk. Talking is a need for a woman. It's not a need for a man. Men need to think. Thinking is what is a need for a man. That's why a man can internalize. Is somebody getting this? So the wisdom point is for you to understand what your reaction should be. So for you as a woman, try and minimize the bouts of going to the past that you have. It will come once, once, but try and minimize it so that you won't do disrespectful things and hurtful things because of a temporary phase you are in. So something you've told your husband, you've forgiven him about, because you got angry and went into that state, you brought everything back and said and did things that will make him feel you've not really forgiven him. So you need to also conquer that and reduce, even though there are many things in that box, try and select the ones you think he can handle. Don't bring things that will break him. Don't bring things that will make him feel so all my effort are not, it doesn't count. Because if men get discouraged, they self-destruct. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So you need to understand the wisdom from the man's side. You need to understand the wisdom from the woman's side. So women use words to communicate. In fact, when we do counseling, what we do, <laughs> when we want to do, we have something called the negotiation sheet. When we want to do that, we get them to write it down. If they say it, they will both be confused. They are mean, and whenever we get them to write it down, at the end of the day, you find out that they are not even arguing or quarreling about the same thing. Never the same thing. And if people are not arguing about the same thing, how can they ever get a solution? We're not discussing the same thing. They talk about the same thing, but now we say, get them to write it. By the time they write, they have five every issue. You find out that <laughs> what she's worried about is not what he's worried about. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Very important. So you must understand how the two work together. Okay? So women, I've said that women are past-oriented. Men are what? Forward-oriented. So as a woman once in a while, be willing to move forward. As a man once in a while, be willing to move backward. Let her understand. 
Next one is still part of the all linked together. Women speak poetically. Men speak literally. Women speak poetically. Men speak literally. <laughs> How does that work? Women generally by nature speak poetically. Women don't speak straightforward. Men, on the other hand, speak very literally. We are literal beings. So as a man, you can't have a good marriage if you don't understand sign language. <laughs> Did somebody get that? As a man, you can't have a good marriage if you don't understand <laughs> sign language or poetry. Because the way a woman is wired generally, she's not a literal being. It's just how she's wired. That is why, if you notice, the first words that Eve heard were also poetic words. They were not literal words. Even though they had literal connotation, but they are, they are poetry. Adam said, she's bone of my bones. I'm flesh of my flesh. That's poem. A poem to many men don't make sense. But to women, women understand the concept of a poem. So women speak poetically. So what do I mean by this? If a woman says, leave me, I'm talking about now in marriage context, okay? <laughs> if a woman says, leave me, the average man thinks, okay, let me leave you for now. But for most women, when they are saying, leave me, they mean, don't leave me. Just too funny, we like that one. <laughs> they don't leave me. Do you get this? So many men don't understand it. When she's saying, leave me, she's saying, show me that you want me. <laughs> so you must understand sign language. When she's saying something, you must say, what does she really mean? When she's saying, remember, you, women use words to communicate feelings. That leave me is how she feels. It's not what she means. For many men, I did this for many years too. My wife said, leave me. I said, okay, good. Because for men, when men are stressed, remember they want to be isolated. So when you say leave me, it makes sense to us because we like to be left alone when we are stressed. So leave me, say good, bye. This is why women, you notice that you don't usually gain much when you do malice with your husband. Men don't see malice as a big problem. They even like the quietness before. Men don't understand play fight. You know play fight? How many of you know play fight? You know play fight? We are fighting, but we're not really fighting. Women like play fight because it's poetic. Play fight. No, 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 I'm not talking to you. And the whole idea is that you should come and say, what's wrong now? That's the whole idea. But men are literal beings. You say, I'm not talking to you. You say, I'm not talking to you. He doesn't understand that. No, that's not what we mean. For two weeks, he says, I would never give up. <laughs> two weeks, he has still not talked to you. He's a fighter and a competitor. He thinks you are, this is, this, this is going down. We are doing Malice Championship. Malice <laughs> Heavyweight belt for Malice. No! When she's saying, I'm not talking to you, she wants you to pursue her. She wants you to pursue her. Women want to feel wanted. I'll say that again. Women want to feel what? And the only way she can feel wanted is when you pursue her. Not her telling you she wants to be pursued. For her to tell you she wants to be pursued has spoiled the whole pursuit. She wants you to figure it out. So when she's walking about doing moody in the house, banging things, doing some out, just doing her face, most men don't know what to do. Most men think, ah, I didn't know we are fighting. It's going to go down. <laughs> ah. Me too, I will frown. The man too, we bone, carry jacket. Me too, I'm going to work. Ha. No! When she's doing that, she needs attention. That's our way of saying, I need cheering up. I need attention. You know, in the Bible days, when they married, they said the man should take one year off work to cheer up his wife. Women need cheering up. You need to make your wife, your wife laugh once a day. At least minimum. Those of us that are funny, we do more than once a day. But the average guy that you're not so funny, at least make a fool of yourself or to tell her something funny <laughs> once a day. 
I'm telling you, women need cheering up. It's not, I'm not just telling you for the sake of it. Their emotional composition easily goes to stress mode. I explained this, a bit of this last week, remember? And stress mode kills women literally, kills. This is why it's not fair that we are pushing women to walk at the pace that men walk. Men thrive with work. Men brag about work. So, boy, I sleep for office yesterday now. He said, ah, you try me. Two days now, I don't do office. They are saying it like complaint, but amongst men, is bragging. It's like, you're like have, you, have you seen male gorillas, the big male gorilla, silverback gorilla? They're like, they're proud. They're like, it's, they're bragging. So, they carry everything. You don't know how to fight. They show each other strength. They'll carry everything. Throw it. Say, hey, you won't fight me. That, that's how it is for men. Men, everything is bragging and honor. So they say, ah, oh boy, see traffic yesterday. I did traffic four hours yesterday. They say, ah, you're all small now. I did traffic three weeks. <laughs> That's how men talk. <laughs> men brag about who is more stressed and who is working harder. <laughs> you see, that literally kills women because their own juices, because that, that stress of work releases our own testosterone makes us feel better. That kind of stress doesn't help women. It releases cortisol for women. That stresses women. What women need to be released is oxytocin. Oxytocin is more released when a woman has a good family life, seeing babies. You know, either their own babies or another person's babies. Anything that has to do with family releases women's oxytocin. Oxytocin helps women's immune system. If they don't have oxytocin, their immune system is reduced, which increases risk of cancer and other things. So, a lot of women's sickness are directly connected to stress, especially family stress, medically proven. So a lot of women have ailments that the doctor can't find the reason why, naturally. It's not a physical reason, an emotional reason. Her husband is not treating her right. Family is not going well. Very important. A woman places that. So you must understand she speaks poetically. You speak literally. So reduce malice. Talking heals for her. This is why you can't not be in touch with your wife. You cannot give her those doses of attention. She has nobody else to talk. When a woman is in love, she cuts off most of her friends and tries to focus all her energy on her spouse. Then this bomb boy is not even available. Doesn't talk to her. He wants to go and talk to his own friends. No. You need to give her large doses of attention. When she's acting up, looking sad, whatever, she needs cheering up. Give her attention. And she doesn't want to tell you, eh, come and give me attention. No. It doesn't work like that. You need to figure out when she needs attention. Just give her attention. You need to know when her behavior is falling below her normal, cheerful, happy self. It means her emotions are down. Just find something to lift it up. So all the I love yous, you make a difference in my life. I need you. I don't know what my life would have been like without you. Yes. Those things releases her oxytocin. It heals her. Headache can go. Just by you saying I love you. I told you two weeks ago, scientists have discovered that just by calling, saying baby to a woman makes her feel better. Scientifically proven. Just calling a, baby, a woman, baby, my baby. So as a husband, my baby should be flowing from your mouth. Mean it too. She knows when you don't mean it. Are you here, somebody? So you must understand sign language. There are sometimes what she needs is for you to hold her. She won't tell you, come and hold me. You should understand sign language. Women speak poetry. When a woman, when your wife wants to have sex, she has body language. She doesn't tell you, let's have sex today. But you know, men, I love men are clueless, just walking like soldier, just soldier. No. Be observant. That's, that's the whole concept of this teaching, for you to understand how to read the signs. Sometimes your wife needs cuddling. It's not even sex she wants. She just wants you to hold and cuddle with her. And you are going somewhere. Those of you that watch my, that watch my uh, YouTube channel, if you have not even subscribed to my YouTube channel, I don't know what on earth you are doing. I'm a member of my church. When I interviewed Banky W. and Williams Chamber that we did, he shared a very interesting story for those of you that have watched it. You know, he was into politics and he had business. And so there was a time period of his life where he was so busy going out early in the morning, come back late in the night, going out, because he was doing politics and business and everything. And one day he just noticed that his wife was looking depressed and looking sad. And he was already on his way out again to go to work. And Holy Spirit just told him, go and spend time with your wife needs attention. So he just removed his clothes, entered bed and cuddled her. And she began to cry. She has been needing that attention for a long time. And you see, the chance of a woman is that you don't need to be with them. To, she doesn't need all of your time. No. 
She just needs, you know, your full attention. There's a difference. Once you give her attention, she's okay. She doesn't need you not to do what you want. She, she even wants you to do what you want to do. She gets pride when you succeed. So she wants you to do your, but she wants to know that she is more important to you than any other thing. So she doesn't need all of your time. She needs all of your attention. So that singular act that Banky did by rescheduling all his early morning as appointments, removing his clothes, and getting back into bed to cuddle with his wife, after one or two hours of that, he's free to go for two weeks. <laughs> she won't care. She has gotten the reassurance she needs that she is important. That's all. So women don't need all of your time. No. Women are very simple. If you just plant the seed of commitment, the rest you can cruise. Women are very simple. They are fertile ground. You don't need to, uh, too much drama. But you need to give... Their, they, they don't want to tell you, I need your attention. It removes the whole beauty of the whole thing. So you should, from time to time... Put in the attention. Plan date night. It, 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 it doesn't make any sense for you not to plan date night. Take your wife out. Women place high priority on good family life. That's why for many women, their family, family life might not even be good, but they will want to post that it is good. They get esteem from it. So you see couples that quarrel throughout yesterday night, throughout their drive to church. Once they arrive in church, <laughs> because she doesn't want to portray that her marriage is bad. She gets her esteem from it. Men do the opposite. Men do the same thing, but just uh, as regards work. Things are not working well. Business is not going well, but he's trying to look like he's doing well. Are you here, somebody? So, women speak poetically. Men speak literally. So, for you women, the other side is that take your husband literally. When he says there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. Leave him. Don't say, ah, this one he says, okay. Does he mean he's not Okay. Because me as a woman, when I'm saying I'm okay, I'm not okay. He's just worrying that Asna is not doing well. You are thinking, is something wrong with me? Something wrong with our marriage? Is that he's not happy? No, he's just not happy with premiership. It's not you. <laughs> but on the other hand, the woman is wondering, oh, what are we doing wrong? What am I not doing well? Take him literally. And learn to appeal to his logic more than you try to appeal to his emotions. Because if you want to move him faster to action, appeal to his logic, not his emotion. I'll end with this. There's a story, I, uh, there's a, a message I preached titled The Unforgettable Man and The Unforgettable Woman. It's from the story of, of, of Abigail and David. So David was going to kill Abigail's family. You know the story. I'm just going to summarize. David was going to kill Abigail's family. Abigail heard about it and went to stop David on the way. She brought food and everything for David and his men. And she showed respect that I talked about. She knelt down to talk to David. Then she told David, see, there's no need for you to come and dirty your hand by killing this useless man. That you know you're going to be king one day. People will not use this thing to be spoiling your name. You see, she didn't say, don't come and kill my family. If you kill my family, I'll be a widow. If you kill us, my children will be orphaned. Please. Because that's a woman's first reaction to try and get you to sympathize, get you emotional. But men are not emotional. He appealed to his logic that, look, you, will, you are going to be king. This thing will be dirty in your hand now. Why? Why? You are bigger than this. He spoke to his logic. He said, yeah, I'm king. So I have to come and kill this small boy. So the same thing happens when you want to communicate to your husband. Appeal to his logic, not necessarily his emotions. He doesn't understand. He said, Junior, Junior will not be happy in that school. Say, who is interested in junior happiness? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here for junior happiness. When, when he grows, he should pursue his own happiness. <laughs> Instead, tell him things like, oh, the school fees there is cheaper. Or your friend's kids are there. Or kids that go to that school are usually likely to get scholarships. Or on that path, they can get scholarships for uh, you know, higher institution. Those are logical things a man can relate to. Say, hey, ah, scholarship. Man, not easy here, those kinds of things. Scholarship. Put all of them there, even though I have not born. Register him now. <laughs> Praise God. So like I said, men don't also understand play fights. So don't do play fights with a man. If you're upset with him, try and tell him how you feel, why you feel so. Don't dramatize. Don't emotionalize the whole issue. Don't, don't think by... He doesn't understand that code language you speak. 
Don't think that by frowning he will understand it. My wife bought a book early in our marriage that helped her. The book was titled, Men Don't Read Minds, They Read Newspapers. Women always expect men to read their mind. You say, As you are frowning, he will know how I'm feeling. No, he thinks you are just meditating. <laughs> so if you're upset, without being overly emotional, just tell him how you feel that this thing you did, I didn't like it, it was not nice. If you get overly emotional, he will be more interested in defending the emotions than even getting the facts. Men talk for facts. Hallelujah. Were you blessed this morning?